This is Matthew Cratters, Bitcoin University. Today I want to talk about Bitcoin spammers working with the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. But let's start with BitVM. This is the BitVM white paper, Compute Anything on Bitcoin by Robin Linus. BitVM is a clever way of building Turing complete smart contracts on top of Bitcoin. And all the heavy computation is done off chain and then brought back on chain for verification. It's one way to bring Ethereum like smart contracts to Bitcoin. But I would say given Ethereum's resounding failure over the past few years, one might reasonably ask whether there's any real ethical demand for this kind of functionality or whether it will, it will more likely just be used for more scammy tokens and projects like Ethereum itself has. Now we have companies using BitVM and using this protocol to try to build on top of Bitcoin. This is a company called BitLayer, which markets itself as a Bitcoin Layer 2 company. They raised a few million dollars at a $300 million valuation back in July of 20. 24. And this is part of the announcement. BitLayer will also launch its own governance token. Of course, it always includes a ship coin called BTR, Hugh said, and noted that the token will have similar, similar use cases to Ethereum Layer 2 project Arbitrum's ARB token. He said BitLayer validators would need to acquire quite a big amount of BTR tokens put into staking to access gas fees, revenue sharing, blah, 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 governance vote, voting, etc. Just another uh, form of Ethereum redux. Tokens like this are great for venture capitalists, for VCs and insiders as a pre-mine that could be dumped on others for extra profits. And so if you see a Bitcoin layer two like this using its own token, it's most likely just another Bitcoin affinity scam. And that's what BitLayer looks like to me. By contrast, the Lightning Network uses Bitcoin, uses SATs themselves. Bitcoin layer twos really do seem to be one of the new preferred scams in this cycle. We started with the whole ICO boom with Ethereum. We had we had NFTs and those scams in the previous in the in the next cycle, the 2020 cycle, and in this cycle, the 2024 cycle, it seems like Bitcoin layer twos are one of the preferred scams. The scammers keep adjusting, of course, as people figure out their tricks. If you're finding this video interesting so far, I just ask you to very briefly here to ask you to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. It looks like BitLayer's token, their scammy token BTR, has not launched yet, but this is the preview preview page for it on CoinMarketCap, so it does definitely appears that this is a real thing. And then yesterday we got this announcement from BitLayer. We're beyond excited to break the news. BitLayer has forged strategic partnerships with three major Bitcoin mining pools, Ant Pool, F2 Pool, and Spider Pool, whose combined global hash rate accounts for nearly 40% of the total Bitcoin network. This collaboration marks a crucial infrastructure breakthrough to bring BitVM Bridge into operational implementation, blah, blah, blah. Following this partnership, BitLayer's mining partners will provide network interfaces capable of accepting non-standard transactions, NSTs, and ensure on-chain confirmation. This enables anyone to submit NSTs via reliable mempools, in other words, cheating, centralized mempools, or miners in the challenge process, significantly reducing the security and functionality uh, reinforcing the security and functionality of the BitVM bridge. So you basically have a partnership here between major, major mining pools, Chinese mining pools, and these crypto VCs. BitLayer joins forces to supercharge Bitcoin DeFi and to pump their token. Bitcoin DeFi has seems to be, as I said, the scam of this cycle. Now, if we take a look at these different pools, these different Bitcoin mining pools, Ant Pool, F2 Pool, and Spider Pool. There's Ant Pool with 20.45% of the hash, F2 Pool with 7.63% of the hash, and Spider Pool with 6.13% of the hash. So that is quite a bit of the Bitcoin mining network. And then as we learned, I believe it was last, last year, that Ant Pool is actually a pool of pools, and so mining centralization is even worse than we uh, than we uh, previously thought. Mononaut points out here that there's been this consolidation of mining reward outputs from these different pools. Ant Pool, F2 Pool, Binance Pool, Brains, BTC, Com, SEC Pool, and Poolin are essentially the same mining pool, controlled, of course, by the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party. If you add up the hash rate from all of these, I couldn't find the hash rate percentage for BTC, Com, or Poolin. They're quite small. And they're probably included in this part here and this other part, which is only only 
but if you add them all up, you do get about 40%, a little more than 40%, which is what the news announcement said, 40.46% 40, 40 of the total hash hash of the network are these Bitcoin mining pools. Now that's already big enough to attack the network, even if BitLayer weren't a thing. You don't need 51% to still do lots of damage, like empty block attacks, block withholding attacks, etc. And if you if you control 40% of the hash of the network, that means you get to produce 40% of the blocks. And so you can do some mischief. It's not like having 51% or 61% or 80% of the hash, but this is still quite bad. And this would be bad with or without spam. This is the problem of mining pool centralization that the folks at Ocean Mining are trying to solve. So you don't need 51% of the hash to still do a lot of damage like empty block attacks, block withholding attacks, and of course, putting things on the blockchain that node runners like you and I do not want put there. And this is what this agreement agrees to do. And it's mostly, it looks like, for sort of uh, exit transactions and will be used in an emergency. But this is beside the point. This is another example of crypto VCs going directly to mining pools. And there's really zero philosophical or financial reasons for node runners like you and me to want to help crypto VCs promote yet another Ethereum-like project that's guaranteed to, fa to fail. This is the problem with the Ethereum people coming to Bitcoin. They were idiots on Ethereum, and now they're pr trying to bring their idi uh, idiocy to Bitcoin as well. Make no mistake about it, Bit BitLayer is going to be a complete failure. I feel sorry for the people who invested in it, just like Ethereum has been a complete failure. There's no ethical market demand for these pro projects. There's just scammy demand, and they're all pump and dumps. No one wants these products except for the crypto VCs pumping that, that token BTR, of course. But even after BitLayer fails, this is a thing node runners will still need to store their garbage in blocks forever. It gets worse. And pool, this pool of pools is controlled by Bitmain, which is the major maker of almost all the ASICs in the world. And like every other strategically important Chinese company, has extensive ties, of course, to the CCP. So what this headline from Coindesk Coindesk should have read, it should have said CCP controlled mining pools working together with crypto VCs to spam the chain. I think that's a more accurate summary of it. This is yet another example of malicious mining pools working together with crypto VCs to bring more filth to Bitcoin while seeking to bypass Bitcoin's traditional P2P network of nodes relaying transactions to each other. This is very similar to malicious miner Mara's slipstream product, which we've talked about on this channel before that allows spammers to submit their spam directly to Mara, another mining pool, in this case, an American mining pool, rather than having to worry about whether node filters will stop their spam from being sent around the network. Do you see what's happening yet? Malicious mining pools plus crypto VCs are terrible for Bitcoin. And this is why we need to continue using filters on Bitcoin and to fix the filters and to tighten the filters. Nothing that they do, nothing that these malicious mining pools or crypto VCs do is of any benefit to people like you and me who run nodes because we want to use Bitcoin as a monetary network and we want that sort of self-sovereignty that comes with running your own node. But when we set up our own nodes, it's not to help the crypto VCs that are funding BitLayer or to help these Chinese CCP controlled mining pools. Bitcoin Core, of course, will seek to portray this as yet another example of why Bitcoin nodes need to be forced to relay spam across the network in order to make it easier and cheaper for spammers who would otherwise need to submit the spam directly to miners, as BitLayer will be doing, which is both more time consuming and more costly. Not everyone can partner with Chinese mining, mining pools like BitLayer is doing, and so it does require some special access, and I'm sure there's money being exchanged as well. But this is really putting the cart before the horse, Bitcoin Core seeking to portray this as yet another example of why Bitcoin nodes need to relay spam because otherwise the spam will go directly to the mining pools. This is really putting the cart before the horse. We should not be forcing node runners to store and relay garbage that has no value to them, but rather clogs up the chain and competes with monetary transactions on the network. Instead, this is what we should be doing. We should be making it as difficult as possible for spammers to get their spam in the chain by having nodes continue to filter it out and by adding new filters. And if malicious mining pools still want to put the spam in their blocks directly, they do run a, a real risk, fortunately, because while Bitcoin nodes are verifying a new block that was just produced by a miner and that has a spam transaction in it that the nodes have never seen before, since the transaction was never shared across the network, but was rather submitted directly to the mining pool, this is why nodes have never seen this particular spam transaction before, 
while Bitcoin nodes are taking the time, the extra time needed to verify the spam block since they need to contact the mining pool, ask for more information about the spam transaction that was in that block that they suddenly see, there's this real risk that another mining pool finds a block at the same time that contains only transactions that the whole network has already seen, i.e. no direct submissions to the mining pool, whether it's Mara or F2 pool or AND pool or spider pool. So there's a real risk that a competing mining pool finds a block at the same time, in other words, mines a valid block at the same time that does not contain any spam and that contains only transactions that all the nodes have already seen. And so if Bitcoin nodes verify that block first, which is quite likely since they don't need to waste time contacting the mining pool to get information on any spam transactions that were directly submitted to the mining pool and ended up in that block, then the spam-free mining pool block will win the race and get added to every node's version of the Bitcoin blockchain simply because nodes will find it's much faster to verify that and add it as the next block in their blockchain. Now, the malicious mining pools can be very sad indeed when that happens because they will have missed out on the whole 3.125 Bitcoin, more than $300,000, obviously, block subsidy, because why did they miss out on it? Because they decided to include a spam transaction that paid a high transaction fee, direct submissions to the mining pool always cost more because of this risk. And so the malicious, malicious mining pool basically risked 99% risked of the reward, trying to get a little more for the 1% of the 1%, I'm sorry, a little more for the 1% of the remaining 1% of the reward that comes from transaction fees because the block reward today is still 98, 99% uh, block reward, that 3.125 Bitcoin. And so they missed out on it because they included this one spam transaction. And so when two blocks were produced at the same time, the nodes went with the block that was faster to verify. So that's one way that mining pools are supposed to be kept honest. Of course, extreme global mining pool centralization messes with everything, including the incentives relied on by Satoshi's design of the protocol. And if the CCP and pool of pools didn't produce so many blocks, direct submission to them would never work. Bit, BitLayer would have no interest in partnering with them since, since and pool would only be finding a block, say, 1% of the time instead of 40% of the time. And again, if you control 40% of the hash rate, you'll find 40% of the blocks on average over time. So this is yet, yet another reason why ocean mining and data are so important to Bitcoin's future in terms of decentralizing mining pools. So we don't have a situation like this where malicious mining pools have so much control and they're running scared. They're running scared from ocean mining. Ocean mining is growing very quickly and Bitcoin node runners as well are becoming wise to the tricks that crypto VCs are using and how they can work together with malicious mining pools. And so if I were running one of these mining pools, I'd be watching these developments very closely. I would be watching Ocean come on the scene and realizing that my days are numbered. Disclaimer, I personally, I'm not being paid or compensated in any way by Ocean Mining or any of the people involved. I don't have any business entities or any indirect way that I'm benefiting from them. And I don't have any equity or stock options in this or any other Bitcoin related company. And I certainly don't have any connections or compensation from any crypto company, but I still promote them because this is what Bitcoin needs. I think they're good guys. Ocean Mining and Block Template Decentralization is the way we wrest control from the CCP controlled Bitcoin mining pool. So I'll put a link in the description notes below to Ocean. You can check out their dashboard here. You can follow the hash as it continues to grow. And I believe that Ocean will continue to grow. This is really what Bitcoin needs at the moment. We can see their hash rate now currently above six and a half exahashes per second. So that's great to see. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comments section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.